We did not. In fact, as a matter of fact, in my opinion, we overachieved. How do I know that? In the last three African Nations Cup, we missed out on two. That is unusual for a country that goes to the Nations Cup. We gather our players together. Literally, five days they go. They finish in the semi-finals. Sometimes they get to the finals. When we've really prepared, they win the trophy. So when Nigeria sleeps and wakes up and appears at the Nations Cup, Nigeria gets to the worst case scenario, at least according to my own bet history, semi-finals. So without you doing anything, certain things will fall in place. But we've not been intentional, whether it's about cultural leadership, whether it's about um, the economy, whether it's about anything, but something has to be said. The biggest leader of black soft culture in the world is Nigeria. And that has been done in spite of the Nigerian reality of governance. And that has been led mostly by young Nigerians. You go to anywhere in the world, Davido performed as Suriname. Many Nigerians did not know there was a country like that before then. Whiskey would be going to Haiti. The likes of Basket Mouth, the likes of, what's his name, Egberi Papa, they've gone to places that most Nigerians do not know even exist. And these people actually knew about them before now. What happened in those sectors? People sat down and said, look, actually people don't give governments this credit, but government was a part of it. And I think this was before democracy. People sat down and said, look, all this foreign music that we're playing on our radio stations is too much content from foreign. Let's reduce it by a certain amount. So they basically said, you must play a certain amount of Nigerian content. When people tell this story, people don't tell it, but I remember it very well, even if I was, I was very small. That reality changed everything. So I went from a KC boy that saw Nigerian content as Raz to being like, why are you not playing Nigerian music in a foreign country? Like, I go to Rwanda, I'm like, how come I haven't heard about Nigerian music? Because people paid attention to that, and now it, has, it is beginning to be a certain... In fact, government only had to create that part. Basically, government had to create that idea, and people stepped in place. Nigerians naturally would succeed, even if you don't do anything. Sometimes, really and truly, government just needs to get out of the way. And how do I mean out of the way? Immersion stars, power, um, security. If we direct, some companies spend as much as 60% of their production cost on alternative power. That's how many millions of jobs if that was like across the board. So what will come, what will come on top of it that will bring everything together, in my opinion, is, is a vision. Really and truly, what's Nigeria's vision for education? What do we intend to do for the, at, at what year do we intend to host the World Cup or win the World Cup, whether for football, whether for conventional FIFA football or for rugby or for whatever thing what kind of how many jobs do we want to create by the year 2050 every time we're mentioning 200 million nigerians 180 million nigerians what jobs are those people going to be doing in the year 2050 we need to bring those without a vision everything we'll be doing it's just like i'm winking at people but i'm winking at them in the dark nothing is going to happen nobody's going to see anything because nobody knows we're just playing this game we don't know where the goal post is so at the end of the day, well, you don't even know what victory is. What are we going to call victory in five years' time as Nigerians, in whatever sector? What are we going to call victory in 10 years' time as Nigerians, in whatever sector? We don't know. That's why any small victory, we scream. We beat Iceland, a country of the people in Lagos Island are more than them in Iceland. We should not be screaming for that. It's, it's we screamed not. because we did not expect to beat them because we knew that we did not do anything in the last five or 10 years to do anything like that. I don't speak as a Nigerian when I say that if this country paid attention to anything in the world for the next five years, it would conquer the world without sweat. Thank you very much for, for end, end, enduring with us and, and um, giving us your time. As you can see, we are very passionate about our country. We are very passionate about what the government can do for us, and more importantly, how we can help the government. Because without each other, we cannot have a united Nigeria. We cannot have a successful Nigeria, and we cannot have a successful football team either. <laughs> Thank you very much. Do enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to our moderators. Um, we are going to have a goodwill message from uh, Basket Mouth. Basket Mouth, please don't, please don't leave the stage yet. But thank you very much for this um, session. Hopefully, we will start building 
our nation better. So Basket Mouth has a goodwill message for our celebrant, His Excellency, today. And we'll be coming to the end of the BRF Gap Fest very soon. But before that, His Excellency would come up to also give a closing address. And yes, Basket Mouth is here. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me take this off. Uh, um, I actually didn't have an idea of what was happening today until when I went to Idris's office, then he said they were doing something for... But he didn't know that it was loud. <laughs> he still doesn't even know what he just did. <laughs> and I said I had to participate for several reasons. I've known Mawaga for a very long time. I, I, if you've noticed, I am one of those people, I don't, uh, you hardly see me with any of these politicians, so to speak, because for several reasons, we don't communicate on the same frequency. Most of them, they are older than the country, <laughs> so they don't even respect the country. So the only politicians that I like are the ones that are younger than Nigeria. <laughs> and I want to say happy birthday, sir. I, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to walk around. Not many governors have, have, have thought about the idea of calling youth entertainers, calling them together and say, come sit down. I want to listen to you. Tell me what your problem is. Tell me how I can solve it. Tell me the director, the, the places to look at. He did this over 20 times during his time in power. We'll go to the state house, we sit down, we eat and dine and wine with him. And it happened all the time. And even though a lot of things didn't happen because of time, it gave us that confidence. And the one thing that most youth need is confidence. One time they said the youths are lazy. A lot of youths got angry. But to think about it, are we really strong in what we do to a large extent? Because I know what I'm about to say might be a little bit edgy, but the man that said we are lazy was in power when he was pretty young, right? He left power, leaving the same problem he saw there came back years later to get into power. Nobody did anything about it. Of course he would think that the people are lazy. And when he said the youth, he didn't mean us. He meant people younger than him. <laughs> so it's not only the youth that should be upset. Or guy, you too, you should be upset. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, during August time in power, a lot changed. I... A lot change, be it entertainment, infrastructure, everything. And one thing that I just heard that he did, and I, don't, I know that nobody here, I don't know if anybody heard about it, but in 2012, there was a plane crash in Ikeja, Dana Air. There were some kids that lost their parents in that crash. Nobody has ever asked where those kids are. Nobody. But just to let you know, those kids, they've all been living with His Excellency and the wife since 2018. That thing happened, I think, in June. They got them into the house. And in July, they were in America for holiday. I don't know if you understand the dynamics, which means it's, it's not just about leading the people. It's about having the passion. It's about having, you know, to, to, to feel the pain. Governor had done that thing, it would have, they would have built a billboard. <laughs> Let me just drink water. I just said rubbish. Huh? <laughs> Your Excellency, I want to wish you a happy birthday. I want to wish you great life, great health. I want to wish you, I would have wished you wealth. No. When I say what, I don't mean those kind of, but you are comfortable. 
I will pray for myself. 